Section 13, question 3. PQRS is a rectangle formed according to the following conditions. It is bound by the lines x equals 6 and y equals 12. P lies on the curve with equation y equals 8 over x between 1, 8 and 4, 2. R is the point 6, 12. Part A, part 1. Express the lengths of PS and RS in terms of x, the x coordinate of P. Well, here's PS here. So we can see that that's a difference between the x coordinates. The x coordinate here is x, the x coordinate here is, sorry, x coordinate here is 6, the x coordinate here is x. This x coordinate here was, for example, 2, it would be 6 take away 2, that's 4. It's not, it's x. So all we can do is put down an expression for that, which would be 6 minus x. So again, if you think if the x coordinate here was 2, then the x coordinate here was 6, 6 take away 2, that's 4, but it's 6 take away x. So that's 6 minus 6. So up here, the y coordinate is 12. So it's a difference between the y coordinates here. Y coordinate of 12. So the y coordinate of s is the same as the y coordinate here, which is 8 over x. So that will be 12 minus 8 over x. Part 2 then says, show that the area can be given by 80 minus 12x minus 40 over x. So that's pretty straightforward. That's just going to be the length times breadth. So area will be equal to 6 minus x bracket 12 minus 8 over x. So I'm going to use FOIL method to expand this one out. So 6 times 12 is 72. 6 times minus 8 over x is minus 48 over x. Insides is minus x times 12, that's minus 12x. And last, minus x times minus 8 over x is going to be, well, the x's will cancel and that will be plus 8. So I can see 72 plus 8 is 80. Minus my 12x. Minus 48 over x. And that was the result that I was looking for. Part B. Find the greatest and least possible values of A, the area, and the corresponding values of x for which they occur. Well, I'm looking at this quadrilateral here. Now, what we can see is this quadrilateral can be slid up and down this function here. So that's between x equals 1 and x equals 4. So really what we've got is a diagrammatical um, support to say that this is us looking at a closed interval between x equals 1 and x equals 4. Now we know from closed interval questions that a closed interval is just a snapshot of a curve. Now if you look at the snapshot of a curve, the maximum value might occur at the maximum turn point. The minimum value might occur at the minimum turn point. Now alternatively, the maximum value might not. The maximum value might occur at one of the endpoints as opposed to the maximum turn point. And the minimum value might occur at the end point as opposed to the minimum turn point. So what we can say then with closed interval questions is to find the maximum and minimum values. And that's what we're looking for, the greatest and least possible values. They either occur at turn points or they occur at end points. What we need to do is to check both. So we're going to check turn points by differentiation and differentiate and make it equal to zero. So I'm going to, first of all, prepare to differentiate. So a equals 80 minus 12x minus 48x to the minus 1. I'm then going to differentiate that. So the constant goes, and I get minus 12. Bring this down, multiply. That will give me plus 48x to the minus 2. And it's stationary point, so I'm going to make the differentiated function equal to 0. So, let's be differentiated. So, minus 12 equals, or rather, tidy up. So, that'll be minus 12 plus 
48 over x squared, and that's equal to 0. Now that looks quite complicated, but quite easy to deal with. I'm just going to multiply everything in the function through by x squared. So that will give me minus 12x squared. That will cancel that, and give me plus 48. 0 times x squared is still 0. I've now got minus 12x squared is equal to minus 48. They two cancel to give me a positive. x squared is equal to 48 over 12, which is 4. And take the square root and x is equal to 2. I'm not going to take the negative result there because it doesn't make sense in the context of the question. Whereby I know that x is in the quadrant where x coordinates are positive. So what I'm doing next is to investigate the area at the turning point, which is 2, and at the end points, which were 1 and 4. So that's about subbing these into the differentiate, into the area function rather. So a1 equals 80 minus 12 bracket 1 minus 40 over 1. So that's 80 minus 12 minus 48, and that will give me an area of 20. I'm now going to investigate what happens at the turn point, x equals 2, so that's a of 2 is equal to 80 minus 12 lots of 2 minus 40 over 2. So that's 80 take away 24, take away 24 again. And that's 80 take away 48, and that gives me an area of 32. I'm now going to investigate a4. So that's 80 minus 12 lots of 4 minus 40 over 4. And that will give me 80 minus 48 minus 12, which is 20 again. So what I can see is the greatest value for the area is definitely 32, and that occurs at x equals 2. The least value for the area is given by 20, and that occurs twice at x equals 1 and x equals 4. So I just want to finish things up by explaining that. So... The max area equals 32 and occurs when x equals 2. The min value for the area is 20 and occurs when x equals both 1 and when x equals 4, and that's the final answer.